the room if you don't mind me saying. There's no greater awkward silence in the world than when a man's rummaging around in your arsehole. It's a tough one. And to kill the awkward silence, he says, I could never do your job in a million years. Do you know what? I could never do your job in a million years. And I'm laying there the whole time thinking, oh, I wonder if he wants to wake me off. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support over the last few years. You've been absolutely fantastic. Um, secondly, this is more for the ladies, this. I get a bit worried that the ladies sit there thinking, Blimey, the wife gets a bit stick, doesn't she, eh? Poor cat. <laughs> Can I reassure you, girls, nothing gets said on this stage that I don't run by at first. <laughs> True. I ain't said nothing about the monkey feet yet. <laughs> Waiting for the moment. I'm going to have to do it when she's at her most happy and relaxed. Maybe when she's taking the nits out in the air on her. <laughs> no, she really is. She's so, she's as happy as a pig in shit at the moment. I can, I can show you the credit card statements if you really need them. We're getting a wood burner. What the fuck's the matter about? A wood burner? You know, all I want is a gas fire. <laughs> no, it's going to be fucking Grizzly Adams now, out in the car. <laughs> it's getting cold! Don't worry, my hands are bleeding, but I'm still working! <laughs> and I nearly blew it with the wife. I'm going to tell you the story. I nearly blew it in the first six months. I nearly blew the whole fucking thing out of the water. Now, it involves the events of 9-11. So strap in. <laughs> Hear me out, people of Liverpool and surrounding areas. I know 9-11 was a terrible, terrible day in human history. Tragic, tragic, tragic beyond belief. However, 9-11 did get me out of the doghouse. Hear me out, hear me out before ye judge. My wife and I met in the year 2000. Like I said, we went off on the Greek holiday at this whirlwind romantic week. We had a bit of a deal breaking moment there when I changed into a pair of speedos and a bum bag. <laughs> I haven't been away for 10 years. Things have moved on, haven't they? <laughs> Thank God I'd lost my vest that said posing till closing on it. <laughs> I in Napa, 1990. <laughs> we walked that square. So anyway, we came back and I said, look, you ain't got time to be fucked about, I ain't got time to be fucked about. Do you want to move in and see if it's got new legs? Put it to the test. So she said, I'm there. So she moved in. You've got to understand, I was still quite an independent man back then, still able to make my own decisions. Able to buy a pair of shoes without sending her a photo first. <laughs> it's always a tough one, isn't it, standing in the shop. Do you like them, sir? I don't know yet. <laughs> no. I'm having a crisis, apparently. <laughs> no one wears green cowboy boots <laughs> so your fucking life out. Um. <laughs> when she got back, I sat her down. I said, listen, sister, I'm going to be up front with you, right at the top. This is only life unfolds. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I go and do the comedy. I said, but Mondays, I've got a bit radio ring. I have a Monday club with a lad. It's fucking as rare. What state I'll end up in. She said, fair enough, fair enough, if that's how you live your life. But I said, tell you what, seeing as you just moved in this Monday, I'll be home about half seven with a nice bottle of wine and a takeaway for you. 
She said, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I said, I know, stop crying. <laughs> I went out with every intention of going home. Every intention! But then I got the flavour, didn't I? The dreaded flavour! All I had to do was phone him and say, look, I've got the flavour. I'm afraid I'm going to let you down, but I'll make it up to you later in the week. She said, oh, I'm a bit disappointed, but no, I'm here. But it got round it. But I didn't do that. Because I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a coward. <laughs> and I'm an asshole. <laughs> so I phoned, I said, babe, you know, I said about half seven. I think we're looking nearer half eight. She said, all right, but I have got the plates out. <laughs> half eight rolled round and I thought, I ain't going now. But I won't phone her and irritate her. In my head, I reinvented her as the most reasonable woman in the world. <laughs> Oh, blimey, half eight is still not in. He must be having a lovely time. <laughs> Never mind. I'll make myself a sandwich. And I'll make him one a knob. And I'll leave him a little note. You had a lovely time, didn't you, you last spot? You never come home. Here's a sandwich. Please feel free to give me a nudge if you fancy a bit of the other. That is not what happened. At about nine o'clock, my phone went and the abuse I received was so intense. Every man in the pub could feel it. People were getting jumpy. Someone's getting a coat in here too. I don't like it. Someone's getting a coat in. I don't like it. I put my phone back in my pocket. I'd gone rather ashen. My mate Tony looked at me. He said, what's the matter with you? I said, she's gone right the other way. I better go. Let me? Let me? Hold on. You go running home there. Rest of your life will be a misery. <laughs> All the other divorcees started joining in. <laughs> I said, I oh, mate, you're right, get another drink in. <laughs> Went home at midnight, pissed, <laughs> fell on the bed. She said, is this how it's going to be, living with you? <laughs> I said, I don't know, it's calling you shape up, I suppose. <laughs> The way you spoke to me tonight was appalling. <laughs> Fell asleep. I woke up in the morning to a certain amount of banging and crashing going on outside. I'm still pissed. I shouted out, keep it down out there, where's your civility? The door slammed and she went to work. I woke up about one. I'm in bits now and I'm fucking hell. I'm sobered up. I'm riddled. <laughs> Just said, you're gonna fuck this one up or not? You wanna be the old man under the car? Little dog speaking a piss, a bit of screaming for a bell. <laughs> I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> I fell down on the set here, a broken man, so deep in the doghouse I may never get out again. I flicked the telly on, 9-11's kicking off. I thought, hold up, there's hope. <laughs> this will take the edge off a bit, and it will be. This will take the dairy off. <laughs> when the second plane went in, I said, Mickey, you're out of jail, son. <laughs> you're out of jail. <laughs> At the height of the carnage, I called her in work. And the babe, see what's going on? She said, yeah, we're all watching it on the TV and work. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Puts everything in perspective, though, don't they? <laughs> she said, I'm coming home early, we're going to have that bottle of wine and that takeaway. I put the phone down, fucking straight back in the game, weren't I? <laughs> Drunk out. <laughs> but let me reassure you, let me reassure you, we don't have big arguments like that anymore. We have bollocky little arguments, yeah. unnecessary. On a Sunday, she goes a bit mad, my wife, but she's good all week. Then suddenly she comes in with a bag of kettle chips. 